Hi everyone and welcome to today's uh, briefing. Um, good to see so many of you in attendance and I know there are a lot of others who registered to attend today who may not be able to um, to make this live but obviously we will be sending um, the recording out to those who showed an interest in, in this content. We wanted to take an opportunity today to bring together um, some speakers from some new uh, programs in the Solent to support um, Solent based businesses, um, both um, European Regional Development Fund funded. Uh, and uh, we want to just give you a lot more information today um, about who those um, programs are for, what types of businesses can access their support. Um, and, and answer any questions that you might have. I will say though that um, if anyone has got any detailed questions that are kind of um, about individual cases, individual businesses, um, please feel free to contact the speakers directly um, and book in uh, appointments to kind of speak on that, that separately. But any, any burning questions, do feel free to pop those into the chat. And then after we've had both presentations, uh, the recording will be turned off and those questions will be directed to the speakers. Um, <laughs> for housekeeping as well, if I could ask anyone that's not speaking to um, turn on mute, um, just so that we don't get any disruption during the presentations uh, to the sound quality, that would be much appreciated. So uh, before I introduce um, Helen Stratton from YTKO um, to talk about Get Set Solent, um, and then after that, I'll be introducing Sam from Lowcase to talk about their programme as well, Sam Thomas. Um, I will just give you a quick overview of some recent developments within the Solent LEP Growth Hub team and some programmes of support that are going to be becoming available um, shortly, so in the next couple of weeks. Um, we are always very mindful about the programmes that we are using our funding to deliver. Um, what we don't want is to use public funding to duplicate anything else that's already um, available in the business support market in the region. Um, so obviously that, that can prove challenging at times, different things are popping up all the time in different places um, and, and through different organisations, but we always um, try as hard as we possibly can to liaise with other stakeholders, find out about what's on offer, um, you know, what they see the priorities as, as support for businesses that they're speaking to um, and develop our offering accordingly. So with that in mind um, and having spoken to both um, Helen and Sam about the programmes they're offering. We have developed three new programmes of um, intensive support for businesses and I'll tell you what those programmes are going to be briefly um, and we do have a lot more information available on these on our website um, on solentlep.org.uk um, and then if you go onto the business support hub you can have a look at the dedicated web pages for these programmes. So the first of those programmes that we're launching is uh, called Recover and Rebuild. Um, this is aimed at businesses in the Solent who have been impacted by COVID or Brexit and are looking for strategic support to help them to um, strengthen the sort of foundations that they're now going to be building on um, following those impacts. Um, that could be a range of things. So we are going to be uh, working with a delivery partner, WSX Enterprise, who are going to be um, working directly with businesses um, to support them through whatever challenges they might be facing. Um, the support available through that program and through all three of these programs is uh, 12 hours of intensive support. Um, so that um, I think is going to be of, of great value to lots of businesses, um, you know, irrespective of what challenges they're facing at the moment, um, to work on a one to one basis and receive that tailored support. Um, the second of the new um, intensive programmes is our digital accelerator programme. Um, that is, as the name would suggest, um, focused on digital support. Um, we're also going to be working with WSX Enterprise as the delivery partner for that programme. 
Um, so they are going to be um, in a similar way to with the Recover and Rebuild programme, working with businesses to find out what their sort of digital um, situation is to start with, how much digital um, technology they're already integrating within their business model, where the potential is to perhaps um, optimise how they're using digital to help their business to grow. Um, and again, that's quite a sort of vast um, ranging subject matter and lots of different businesses will, will need different types of support in that area. So that's going to be, again, 12 hours of support. Um, and the final of the three new programmes we're going to be launching shortly is our Potential Exporters programme. Um, there is um, other support available for international trade and exporting, um, but we felt that there was a bit of a gap um, where there were businesses that weren't exporting at all and perhaps had perceived sort of barriers there that were stopping them from um, thinking about trading internationally. Um, and also some businesses who are perhaps starting to, to export and have, have um, sort of dabbled in international trade but not reached their full potential um, in terms of their growth globally. Um, and we are going to be working with delivery partner Newable on that programme. Um, we've already worked with them to deliver some of the EU exit support and um, they've got lots of expertise to help businesses through that and to help um, any business to really build a, an international trade um, strategy and, and hopefully to help businesses to grow um, into new markets and, and really sort of uh, really accelerate the recovery um, that they might have um, you know if they've been impacted again by some of the uh, recent impacts that we all know um, all too well. Um, so I won't talk too much more. Um, please do get in touch with um, the Solon LEP Growth Hub team if you want to know any more information about those new programmes, or of course, if you want to um, direct any, um, any sort of businesses to us for any other support, um, we're always happy to um, have a, you know, book in an appointment with an advisor um, and signpost to other local provisions through other organisations as well. I am going to pick up, um, questions are going to be picked up at the end of the presentation, um, but um, I will just pick up um, your question, Paulina, um, that I've just seen pop up about what I've just spoken about. Um, are those programmes aimed at any business in the solar region? Um, there are um, different eligibility um, criteria for each of those programmes, so I would just advise that you go onto the Solon LEP website and have a little look at um, each of those dedicated pages. Um, some of them are aimed at startups and established businesses, um, some are at only businesses trading over 12 months, um, and with the exporters um, programme, those, um, as I mentioned, it's more targeted towards exporters that are um, not yet trading um, for the majority of their, their sort of turnover. Um, it's 10%, it's, it's I think, is the maximum um, export um, income that they can be operating at at the moment to access that support. So um, have a little look at those and any questions you've got, as I say, do come back to, um, do come back to us directly. We'd be more than happy to clarify anything there. So with that said, um, I will pass over to Helen, um, who will talk to you about Get Set Solent and the amazing support and grants uh, that are available through that programme. Thank you, Jane, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Jane says, I'm the programme director for the recently launched Get Set Solent programme, which is an uh, integrated business support service for businesses in um, the Solent region. Um, we're run by the YTKO group. So um, if we move to the next slide, Will, I just want to outline what I'm going to cover this afternoon, which really is a, a team introduction. So who is the team in the Solent that you can reach and um, to, and talk to you about this um, support. Um, who is YTKO? For those who don't know much about us, I want to talk a bit to the, about the group and our credentials, then move on to the actual details of the program and what are we actually offering businesses. Um, a brief discussion around eligibility. Obviously, there's quite some detail there, so there might be things I won't cover today, which you can pick up with me afterwards. How we want to work in partnership um, with everybody else. We're very much looking for a collaborative approach and we want to work to, together to benefit the business community. And then finally, how you can reach us. So that's really what I want to cover this afternoon. 
Um, next slide, um, please, Will. Um, so the team in Assailant, um, my, I'm the program director. I actually ran the Get Set for Growth program about four or five years ago, so which was also Assailant based. So we're very much building on what we achieved before and it's very similar elements, except this time we have a, a grant um, element. Um, my background is very much working with B2B and B2C businesses, SMEs, and from consultancy, both from business and marketing support. So that's my background. Derek Ellis is a, our finance advisor. He's ex-FMCE. He's very experienced finance advisor. So he will be facilitating most of the grant applications and offering advice on the finance side. And I also have a, um, Nicole, who's our marketing manager, will also be our marketing advisor. We also have an administrator joining who will be doing all the paperwork and um, we're the first point of call. She's also another Helen, which might be a bit confusing, but we'll announce that further down the line. So that's the, the team that we have um, in the Solent. Um, more about the YTKO group. Who are we? If we can move to the next slide, please. Will, that'd be great. So the YTKO group has worked for over 40 years to support the creation and growth of businesses increasing revenues and really contributing to the overall economic prosperity. So Get Set for Growth and Get Set Solent is one of their brands. So we provide all sorts of um, services for the SME journey, both from startup, sustainability growth and scale up. Um, we've supported over 7,000 growth businesses with a collective um, turnover of 2 billion per annum and we are a national group. So we run programs in all different parts of the country. Um, if we move on to the next slide, please, Will. Um, the services YTCO provide in the public sector as part of their social mission include pre-start and start up with our outset brand, um, which operates mainly in Cornwall, Cambridgeshire, Dorset um, and the West Country, through to business growth and access to finance, which is with our Get Set for Growth brand, which is where Get Set Solent fits. And then we also work with supporting women in business with our enterprising uh, women um, group and, and business support and mentoring support. We also offer um, startup loans with our out outset finance um, group and we have an online learning platform for both outset online and for get set which is called Grow Smart which is a great resource for SMEs for all sorts of things. So that gives you the sort of flavour of the brands that YTK offer. At the moment in the Solent region and in Hampshire actually it is the Get Set brand that we are offering businesses. Um, if we can move to the next slide, please, Will, that'd be great. So over 70 million of um, leveraged finance has been raised with our help, um, leading to the creation of over 3,000 jobs. And I've already said we're a startup loan provider, um, which we delivered about 25 million in 2020. We have a, a really good success rate in helping our clients access growth finance. And some of the other things that make us different, we did do from the next slide, please, Will. Um, we conducted um, an evaluation of impact over 14 years from 2006 to 2019 of the impact all of our services have given. And it showed a 362 million triple bottom line impact and a return of investment of 10 pound, roughly 10 pounds 70 for every pound invested. So in addition, um, survival rates of YTCO businesses were high on average. Um, over three years at about 76% compared to the average of 59%. So we pride ourselves on very high quality um, in, in interaction and support with our business marketing and finance support. Um, so moving on to the specifics of the Get Set Solent program, if we can move to the next slide, please, Will. So what are we offering? So we're really targeting um, early stage startups and established SMEs. We are funded through the European Regional Development Fund, so there are some rules and conditions attached with that, of course. We're, we've just launched, we launched, you may have seen some of our press activity and our coverage. We launched on the 5th of July and we're contracted to the 31st of July, 2023. Um, so we are offering a fully funded integrated business support programme that includes one-to-one -one support um, for businesses, workshops which are highly interactive, um, workshops which are with small groups, masterclasses with bigger groups where we have experts come and do various talks, events and access to our online learning platform. So Grow Smart, which is licensed about £12 a month, any client that enrolls with us will get that for free for a year. Um, and we're looking to contract about 12 hours. We're looking about 12 hours support um, as a minimum for 
enrolled businesses. Um, it's going to be very client centered. So we are gonna start with each client with a diagnostic and look very much at what support they need, whether it's a financial support and access to finance, it might be business support, um, it might be very specific marketing support. So we will plan a journey based on their needs and their requirements. Plus this time around, which we didn't have at the last Get Set for Growth program was we do have some grant funding, which is very exciting. So if we move on to the next slide, please, Will. Our aim before we get on to the details of that is really to help business to overcome the two biggest barriers to growth. And that really is generating sufficient profitable customers, which is where the marketing strand of what we focus on is all about. It's really helping people build their businesses, um, companies build their businesses and access new customers um, and accessing finance. So they're the two main barriers to growth that we've experienced at YTCO that businesses say they need help with. Um, so we're really aiming to increase knowledge and skills and give clarity and confidence with some of the support we're going to be giving through the advisory team. In terms of eligibility, if we move to the next slide, please, Will. Um, I like that, it's quite catchy, isn't it? <laughs> um, we, we are supporting, so ambitious SMEs from a wide range of sectors that are looking to grow, whether it's sort of grow in revenue or grow with employment or launch new service or product, but they do have to reside in the Solent LEP region. We have a postcode um, checker on our website. So at the end, you'll see a link to our website. Businesses can go and put in their postcode to see if they fit within the Solent LEP region, which obviously is quite um, an interesting shape. Um, but broadly, it's um, Southampton, Portsmouth, Isle of Wight, New Forest areas, and parts of Eastley, Chandler Falls. So it's very important that businesses do check that before they enrol. We move to the next slide, please. Just to give you a flavour um, of our workshops, and these are just a few, I think we've actually got about, already got um, 30 scheduled over the next three months. Um, it's will range for anything from money sense, how to do a basic cash flow, um, how to do um, cash forecast, um, through to very specific marketing strategies, how to actually put a marketing strategy in place, um, how to identify your target audience, through to how to build a business plan. In addition, we'll have meet the expert sessions where we invite specialised um, experts, whether it's SEO, whether it's Google, whether it's design, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, to come and run sessions. So they're all accessible for enrolled businesses. In addition, just to show you very briefly on the next slide, Will, um, it, we, are, we have the Grow Smart um, platform, which is actually a business community as well. So businesses will get a free license for this for a year and they can enroll and actually build their, their business and marketing plans in this or seek any other sort of advice and support through that platform. That tends to suit some businesses. Obviously, we are very much encouraging a face-to-face, a one-to-one -face, -face, -one dialogue with our, our team in the Solent, but there's some businesses that may want to look up and get additional resources. So moving on to the um, grant side of things, if we go to the next slide, please, Will. Um, so we're offering financial support through the, through the grant program for growth projects. And these, this grant can be used for capital and revenue expenditure. And we will work with any, any business that's interested in a grant to determine eligibility. And of course, there will be, we've already talked about the location, has to be in the Southern Let region, the sector, the purpose, and obviously we have state aid de minimis requirements as well. So Derek will be very much working with any business interest in the grant to determine all that eligibility criteria, which I'm not going to go into today, but you, if you have any questions, we're more than happy to follow up after. It's a 25% intervention rate of a project. And for 2021, we're offering, it's a minimum grant of 1,000 and a maximum of 25,000. So quite a generous grant. And it's quite broad. So it can be used for capital projects, but it also can be used for any revenue project that's going to help grow the business. So that could be anything from consultancy through to web design, through to um, hiring somebody on the sales side to help generate leads. So it's a very broad range of activity that can be applied for. Um, there obviously is a grant application process, of course, so businesses will have to complete and it's all online. It's very easy working with Derek. Um, we will require some information on how they intend to spend the money. Um, the grant money, their, their business plan, some high level business plan and a high level cash flow just to um, financial projections. So, of course, there is a process, but it is actually very accessible and we're very excited to be able to offer that this time around. 
we just move on to the next slide, please, Will. In terms of eligibility, obviously we're targeting SMEs. There is a, a general definition, which I'm sure most of you are aware of, of what an SME definition is. And it, they have to be, um, have, they have to be autonomous. So there is a definition around the percentage of shares hold, held. So we go through all of that with the applicant. Um, the next slide, please, Will. What we're encouraging is the grant and grant application must reflect at least one of the following with the applicant's businesses. So we're looking at job creation, ideally, um, increase in turnover productivity, um, efficiency, profitability. So it's all about improving business health and growth um, or introducing new products and services to the market. So that's very important too. Um, there are a few business sectors that are excluded, um, fishery and aquaculture, primary production, um, processing and marketing of culture products, um, coal, steel and shipbuilding. Shipbuilding is one area we're actually challenging because obviously it's a quite big marine um, affiliated um, industries in the Solent. So that's something we're getting clarity on because that's quite a broad sector there, shipbuilding. So we are, we are seeking clarity to give more advice there. Synthetic fibers, which is an interesting one. Generalized school age children and banking and insurance. But again, we will discuss every business application on its merit and Derek will be able to advise on that if there was any um, query about which category a business falls into. So finally, just to conclude um, the next slide, please. Well, what we're looking to do is work in collaboration. If we go to the next build and the one after actually, well, because it's a build slide, thank you. So next build, please. <laughs> um, we very much want to collaborate with, with yourselves, um, with our partners, with the network of clients that you may have, and we can help expand your network with referrals from our base, because there may not be, we're gonna be getting um, business supply that might not necessarily be right for our program that we can refer to you. Um, we can coordinate events, workshops, campaigns. We can also provide guest speakers from our team if you want to actually put on, share some content to your network. Um, and your client base, and we're happy to cross promote any services you have through our marketing. We do regular email shots and newsletters to our um, database, so we're happy to collaborate in any way. So really what we're looking to do is work with you in the business community to avoid any confusion on any service being offered and make sure we drive awareness of this great fully funded support um, from ERDF. Um, so that's really it, the last slide just gives the details of how we can be contacted, Bill. Um, we have a website where actually the enrollment, the registration for interest for businesses starts. So if they're interested, they complete a quick form on our website. We then receive that and invite them to enroll if they meet the basic eligibility of area. Um, and then you can also reach myself, um, any of the team through that as well. And we also have various social media platforms, as you can see there, where you can link into us and share some of our content. So thank you very much. If you've got any questions, please register them and we can capture them or deal with them at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. That's, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. And just to reiterate, obviously do get in touch um, with Helen. If I, I know there are a few people on the call today who are um, industry specific um, support providers and a couple from the maritime industry. Um, so if you do want to sort of clarify um, if any business you're working with falls within one of those kind of um, areas where, where they're seeking a bit of clarity, I'm sure you can um, yeah, have a chat with, with them about that. So I'd, I'd advise to do that. Um, and that's, yeah, fantastic. Thank you for all of that information. Um, as Helen said, do pop any questions um, into the chat. Um, Desi will be keeping an eye on those um, at the end and uh, will direct those um, accordingly to speakers or advise you that, you know, if it's a more detailed question that that can be taken up um, separately. Um, so moving on then um, to Sam Thomas, who I'm going to introduce now from Lowcase. Um, to talk about some of the targeted support and grants available for companies who offer green or low carbon um, goods and services. Um, so over to you, Sam, if that's okay. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm, as Jane says, I'm Sam Thomas and I'm from Kent County Council. Um, also on the call today are my colleagues, Greg White and James Trainer. Um, we're a team based at Kent County Council who have been working on the Low Case project um, 
in the in like the last few years well i have personally um and it was it was a project which um originally started focusing on smes based in kent essex and east sussex um but over the last year we've had approval um, allowing us to expand um so we're now working in the solent area um as well as working in the coast capital area and also in the em3 area which is um really exciting for us it's allowing us to provide a, a new service to completely new areas um so it's good to be here um if we go on to the first slide please will that'd be great uh yeah so what is low case so low case um is similar to um helen's project in a way it's a, it's a funding program towards smes um kent county council are the accountable body but we have a number of different partners across the across the region um in particular solent is the area i'm solely focused on along with greg um, and we're partnered up with southampton city council and the university of portsmouth portsmouth city council and the isle of Wight council as well um so we've been engaging with them for the last year or so um trying to understand each other um and how we can help smes in the solent region so today's really like the first starting point for us um in understanding the need for low carbon funding um so yeah it's good to be here um and if you have any questions we'll we'll answer them um, either at the end of the presentation or we have a email address anyone can contact and we'll be happy to answer your queries then uh yeah so the funding that we provide um is up to ten thousand pounds um in a grant um so if a project was to cost um twenty five thousand pounds the grant that we could potentially offer would be ten thousand pounds um it doesn't ever go above that um that's the that's the cap limit for us but um it's very re re rewarding um, amount of funding if if it gets to that stage but in the presentation we'll, we'll go through like each day each stage and um how we can get to that point on how an sme can get to a point of having a, a grant allocated towards them um so will if you go on to the next slide please So this is the region that low case covers as a whole. Um, so you can see it's predominantly the south and southeast of England. Um, so this low case has been called low case three because it's like the next the next version of low case as such. Um, so we, as mentioned earlier, we previously focused on Kent, Essex and East Sussex. Um, but as you can see on the map, we've ventured out slightly further south. Um, um, so we've got designated teams for the Solent region uh coast capital area and also em3 uh, next slide please so this slide here um it looks a bit text heavy on this but it's basically our aims um and objectives for us going forward um, and to simplify it's us um, helping smes become more environmentally friendly um, allowing them to understand climate change um the things that we can do to um help prevent it as best as possible um also engage with different smes um, in the low carbon sector um allowing smes to coll coll collaborate as well um so yeah it's really just a, a program that we're we're keen to get stuck into in the Sonar region um i know there's similar erdf projects that are already happening um but low case has allowed us to to really um broaden our horizons really and understand the need for this type of funding um going forward uh, next slide please will so you'll see on the screen now there's a few different work packages here um and these work packages are split into like the type of funding that's available um so like work package one and work package two are the accountable body and type of marketing and communications and then work package three and work package four are the uh, the specific funding that we can provide um, which we'll go into in the next few slides so next slide please will so work package three um, and this work package is all related to energy efficiency works so if a sme in the solent region was looking at 
um, undertaken a lighting project or a heating project, this would come under the work package three um, criteria. Um, so as I was saying earlier, grants, we provide grants up to 40% of the cost. Um, so if a grant, if, if, if a project as such was going to cost £10,000, the maximum grant we could provide is £4,000 £4, towards that. Um, so that's one section of the funding we could provide. So it's energy, so carbon savings, energy savings, um, and the, the usual projects to get out of that are um, lighting, heating, um, solar PV, solar panels. Um, and yeah, that's the basis of energy efficiency. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please, Will. And work package four, um, similar in terms of the intervention rate, 40%. Um, and again, grants capped at £10,000 for this um, work package as well. Um, and the funding that we can provide towards this are projects such as marketing, um, consultancy, um, IT and software. It's not always related to just energy efficiency type projects. <clears throat> if we go on to the next slide, please, Will. So there's a couple of stages we have to go through for each SME in order for them to get a grant and what happens after they get a grant. Um, so you'll see there's a few different phases there. Uh, so phase one is engagement. Um, so that could be an event like this today or having a phone call with a member of the team. Um, once we've made that initial engagement, um, we would then go on to a need assessment, which really just outlines what um, an SME is looking to do in terms of their project. Phase three is us providing a grant to them, um, guiding them on are they are they making like the right decisions? Are they making like the right types of projects? Is there anything else they could do? And then phase four is the end of the project, um, understanding how the funding has benefited them. Um, have they saved? Have they made many low carbon savings? Um, are they planning to do anything else in the future? If we go on to the next slide, please, Will. So yeah, um, phase one, as I mentioned just now, um, so with, within our area and the Solent area, we'll be um, heading to as many events as we can. Um, that's allowing travel and COVID restrictions, etc. cetera. Um, but if not virtually, we're always happy to take a call, um, be on events like this, which is really helpful to us. Um, and we're also working with our partners, as I mentioned earlier, and they're really um, the people that have the local knowledge. So it's really beneficial for us to work with them and their expertise is invaluable. If we go on to the next slide, please, Will. So after we've made that initial engagement with an SME, um, an SME will likely register on our website um, and then which which allows an SME to submit a, an EQ form, which is a eligibility questionnaire. And that's just us understanding if an, if an SME is eligible. Um, and similar to the program that Helen works on, um, our eligibility criteria is the same. Um, it has to be a small and medium enterprise. Um, state aid can't go over 200,000 pounds, et cetera. So all eligibility, um, criteria is fairly similar on um, all ERDF projects. Um, in terms of a needs assessment, that's us having a call with you um, to go through your project plans. Um, so that will include what the project could be, uh, the likely cost of that, and when the project is likely to take place. Um, so it's really like the first step in us understanding each other. Um, how how can we help you? And um, it's it's always a good starting point. Um, some cases an SME might not always go ahead with funding, but they're just making that initial con contact and understanding um, there's this funding available um, and they could come back come back to it later. Uh, next slide, please, Will. So phase three, um, we call it the support package implementation. And to simplify this really is if a needs assessment has gone well, um, we will then go, get to a point where we can um, work through an application form with an SME. And this application form really is the key in potentially um, allowing an SME to have a grant 
um, allocated towards them. Um, if the application form is suitable and it ticks all the relevant boxes and we have all the information we need, this would then go to a grants panel. Um, and a grants panel is basically um, a member from each of our partners. Um, we all sit down or virtually sit down as such um, and talk about the projects that will come forward and the types of projects that we can potentially provide funding towards. Um, and in this, this is this is the part where um, if if a project is suitable, we can then say, yeah, we're happy to give this SME a grant, um, and then we can allocate that grant towards them. And then, like the the next step after that would be um, on how an SME can claim their grant. Um, so it's fairly simple. Um, it can only be related to the project you've been approved for. Um, and then it's basically providing um, evidence of that you've made the purchase for whatever that may be. So if you've um, got an LED lighting project, for example, um, and that supplier you're working with, we just need to see like the original invoice that has been sent, um, the quotes that were um, provided as well before, and the payment made to the supplier and then that can be reimbursed from our from us um, um, as soon as we can um, it doesn't always have to be in one go there's up to like four opportunities to claim you for your your full grant amount next slide please will <clears throat> yep um, and just uh, just to add on the previous slide after an SME is fully claimed we'll have like regular um, checkups just to see how everything's going there could be potential for an SME um, to come back and be supported again by us it doesn't always have to be um, with financial support it could be non-financial support so just consultancy um, we do have another um, part of our program which is called STEM um, and that's called Steps to Environmental Management and that's just for an SME to start their own environmental policy. Um, so it doesn't always have to be um, grant related or direct funding. Um, so you'll see on the case study slide here, um, there's a few different pictures there, um, but we're just gonna talk about one of them. Um, and you'll see in the top left, um, this is Fan Indoor Bowls in Margate. Um, you may have, may have heard of Margate or you might have been to Margate before, um, but we helped out with this um, organization um, regarding LED lighting. Um, you can probably see on their roof there all the lighting that we helped with. Um, so this was a project that we um, were keen to undertake because um, it's a fairly straightforward project for us. It's an energy efficiency one. Um, they were interested in making savings and having lighting installed. Um, and they came to us to help cover the cost in some parts and get a grant towards this. Um, and it's been interesting for us because we've had a number of different indoor bowls clubs come forward. Um, so it must be quite a popular, a popular part of their project. Um, go on to the next slide, please, Will. Yep, this one. Um, so this is our low case website. It's currently under redevelopment. Um, but this is the low case website. Um, I see my colleague James just put the link in there. Um, but that where that yellow arrow is there, register here. Um, once you sit, once you click on that button, it will take you through to the EQ form, um, and it will be a couple of pages for you to fill out um, and send through into us. And once we've got that, we can then go on to need onto the needs assessment, as I mentioned earlier. So it's like the first step in us getting to know you and understanding what you're going to be um, looking to undertake. Uh, next slide, please, Will. Um, and just to finish off on low case, um, we have a couple of contacts here. Uh, James is on the call today, and he's a delivery manager for low case. Um, Melissa Jean's the low case program manager, so she oversees um, all of the low cases. Um, and there's also, we have a new um, email address for Solent, 
solely um, as such. Um, it's locates.so.kent.gov.uk. Um, and if you have any queries at all, even myself or Greg can pick that up and we'll be happy to get in touch. If you go on to the next slide, please. Will. Um, yeah, so that's all for Lowcase. Um, we have, as I mentioned earlier, we are partners at um, Portsmouth City Council, Southampton City Council, um, and the Isle of Wight. Um, and my, uh, our colleagues at the University of Portsmouth just wanted us to reiterate that they have similar um, ERDF projects um, available. Um, I don't know a, whole, a great deal about this, but um, I'm sure if you, if you would like to get in touch, they're more than happy to accommodate and talk through with you um, some different ideas. Um, and as you can see on the screen there, they have funding. <clears throat> they have funding for grants up to 25,000. Um, and they're more than happy to um, talk through with you um, how they can help as well. Um, and next slide, please, Will. And this is just a case study um, from the team at the University of Portsmouth. Um, and this was relating to quite an interesting project, which was a high pollution mask. Um, and we all know masks are quite the topic at the moment. So interesting case study that came up and we just learned about it fairly recently. Um, but just the type of project that they can help out with. Um, and yeah, if you have any queries, um, their email address and website um, has just been put in the chat and the link to their website is on screen now. But yeah, um, thank you all for your time. Um, that's it from me. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them if we have time today or um, please do email myself, Greg or, or James um, at KCC.